Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this video, we are going to grow a vertebrate and examine the early embryological patterns found in vertebrate animals and contrast these patterns with those found in other organisms such as insects, worms, mollusks, and starfish. I will use interchangeably in this video the informal terms vertebrates and chordates. Although there is a distinction we will discuss later between the formal term vertebrata, these are animals that have a ossified backbone, and chordata, animals that have a cartilaginous notochord, which in some animals forms into an ossified backbone. Hence, the term vertebrata is a more exclusive term, while chordata is a more inclusive term. In future videos, we'll look at animals that are members of the chordata, but are not included in the verbata. Multicellular organisms are organisms that feature many cells which act together in the construction of a single individual. During the late Precambrian, the Ediacaran period, about 625 million years ago, the first multicellular organisms originated. Multicellular organisms have many cells which function in different ways and hence can be differentiated from each other. These cellular functions are established early in the embryology and development of a multicellular animal. By studying the early development of an embryo, we can utilize the patterns that we see to construct an evolutionary scenario for the possible early evolution of vertebrate animals. This style of inquiry dates back to the work of Ernest Haeckel in the 1800s, who famously stated that ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny, which means that this by studying the early growth, the ontogeny of an animal, we get a broader vision into the understanding of the evolution and relationships, the phylogeny, of an animal. All right, so let's look at the early development of a vertebrate embryo and compare this pattern with those found in other animals, such as insects, worms, mollusks, and starfish. The first fertilized cell, called a zygote, quickly divides, forming a tight ball of smaller and smaller cells. These cells are called blastomeres. They open up to form an internal cavity called a blastocele. The blastomeres migrate to one side of this hollowed ball of cells to form what is often called the animal pole while the other side of the ball, which is hollow, will form the yolk, which is sometimes referred to as the vegetable pole. Hence, the portion of the embryo that will form the new organism is found wedged on one side of the hollowed out ball of cells. At this point, something amazing happens called gastrulation. An opening appears on the ball, now called a gastrula. Cells quickly migrate into this opening. These cells form a new layer of cells called endoderm, while the cells that remain on the outside of the gastrula are called ectoderm. The opening is called the blastopore. Now the blastopore acts as the first opening into the newly developing animal. And this opening is lined with endoderm cells. In some organisms, such as members of the cnidaria, which includes jellyfish and corals, the blastopore forms the single opening for both ingestion and excretion of food and waste. In insects, worms, and mollusks, such as octopuses, the blastopore forms the mouth and a second opening appears to form the anus. We call these animals protostomes, in which the blastopore forms the mouth. 
In vertebrates, such as this frog embryo, the blastopore forms the anus, while a separate opening forms the mouth. These animals we call duodenostromes. Comparative embryology has shown that the gut tube, which provides a path of ingestion to excretion, evolved at least twice in early multicellular animals. There are remarkably other organisms other than vertebrates that demonstrate the duodenostrom condition in the formation of the gut tube. And those are the echinodermata, which includes starfish and sea urchins and sand dollars, as well as the hemichordata, a group of worm-like creatures that live in the ocean. These groups of organisms are called the duodenostromia, and the blastopore forms the anus in all of these animals. Research examining the similarities of the molecular makeup of the DNA of a huge number of animal groups have confirmed that the echinodermata, hemichordata, and vertebrates form a well-supported branch in the tree of life. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, wow, there's really not many similarities between a starfish and a human being. But now you know that there does exist a shared ancestry with starfish and how our guts formed. And hence, we're more closely related to a sea cucumber than to a grasshopper. In a later video, we'll look at some very unusual and weird looking fossils, which lay on the boundary between the echinoderms and the early vertebrates, and helps to support this theory of early vertebrate evolution. All right, you should now be able to interpret the early embryological patterns of the gastra in both protostomes and deuterostomes and relate this to the broader relationships of chordates and vertebrates. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjaminslashburger.org.